We have reached a zero to one moment when all engineers will begin to use simulation to inform their day to day work, and it will no longer just be a small number of specialists running these codes. At MizBay, we develop a universal interface for simulation called Guru. It's a cognitive AI driven assistant that enables untrained users to run specialized simulation software. The Air Force announced a new priority for building and testing aircraft in simulation first saying that every new program will begin as an e-system because not only are you lowering our risk, you're giving us life cycle benefits before we ever pay that physical world tax. Well, in the A-10 example you see on the screen, you have structural simulations and aerodynamic simulations. You see trajectory prediction and virtual world mission simulation. All of these simulations have to be set up and run quickly and deployed to large compute systems like AFRL's Mustang supercomputer at the bottom of the screen. The problem is that setting all of this up is a PhD level specialty. The best simulation software suites that are validated in each discipline are developed by different companies and they all have their own complicated user interfaces. It takes months to years for a person to learn one of these packages and it takes several hours to manually set up one new simulation. To make e-creation possible, artificial intelligence must be used to minimize the training burden and setup time. Guru is an autonomous system that learns third-party simulation software and runs it for you. Guru will minimize training time and hyper-enable the Air Force to own the simulation tech stack because it enables many simulation packages to work together seamlessly. Warp from the tech stack to the edge because it will accelerate the deployment of simulation based digital twins and e create before you aviate because it makes complex simulations accessible by every engineer. So how do you teach an autonomous system to set up and run someone else's software simulations are computationally expensive and human expert sessions are expensive so data efficiency is critical. We invented a scalable learning process that is data efficient for complicated procedures, and the decisions are explainable. We use a hybrid of symbolic artificial intelligence and machine learning methods in our automated reinforcement learning guided tree based hybrid intelligence synthesis trainer or artist. In this artist demo, you see the system scanning the software interface, in this case, open and foam in Paraview into primitives that define every possible action in the software. It assembles these primitives into a graph and then artist trains from the primitives to a recorded human expert user session. So the workflows that can then be reproduced and adapted to a new user request. We have an incredible team with 20 years of experience in engineering design, high performance computing, computational physics and artificial intelligence. We have worked for DARPA, NASA and the Department of Energy. We went through the 2020 Air Force Accelerator, and we were recently selected and funded for a phase two AFWorks program. Our customers are AFRL DSRC and the Missile Defense Agency, and we are training Guru to run SAIC's avatar trajectory simulation software for hypersonic threat prediction. Five years from now, people will look back and they won't believe that people used to set up these simulations manually. Here is what simulation in Guru looks like. What are we simulating today? The Mach number is 0 0.87 and angle of attack is seven degrees. And I need this fast. Destination is the moon for a lunar flyby set up for a free return trajectory back to Earth. Give me three insurgents in the bunker with a hostage, coordinate arrival of the three units, and execute a hostage rescue scenario.
Simulation complete. I'm sure you're reviewing some really impressive simulation software today, but how are you going to use it all? Please contact us to help with your simulation use cases. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And um, with that, we're going to take a 15 minute break. If anyone has any questions, um, I look here in the chat and I don't see any. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, is it, um, Alan, someone has a question. Is the software air uh, grabbed? Uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, different deployment options uh, for Guru. Um, so, uh, in fact, we um, in the in the case that we have for the Missile Defense Agency, ultimately they want to run it on air gap systems, and so we have been specifically developing a solution for that. Um, and, and the commercial version of Guru, it's running on cloud systems. Thank you. Um, you have another question. To be clear, Guru can be used to build platforms before materials for the platform are, are ever ordered. Um, indeed. So this is, uh, you know, going back to uh, Dr. Will Roper's uh, uh, red pill reports and uh, the new urgency of simulation first. Um, there are a very broad range of simulation software packages to uh, run simulations of every possible subsystem and uh, type of physics um, with respect to, you know, anything on an aircraft from, uh, you know, combustion in the aircraft engine to aerodynamics of the entire vehicle to simulating trajectories and uh, um, simulating entire missions uh, in simulation first. The problem is that each one of these simulation packages, while validated and highly valuable, and they've all existed for years, they take months to years each to learn how to use. So when you're talking about the new radical scale up in simulation that the Air Force has been working on, um, in order to actually achieve that scale up, you have to put as much on the compute side as possible. And we're using artificial intelligence to drive that setup time uh, of the simulations down to a minimum and uh, run as much of uh, these virtual simulations of uh, new aircraft platforms uh, autonomously. Very good, thank you. Let's see if we have any more. And that was from Justin Harvey. Okay, we don't have any more questions. Thank you so much, Alan. Your presentation was awesome and um, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you.